بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أيها الأحباب continuing on our study of شرع uh, السنة by Imam Babahari the abridged uh, version the short shortened version where Imam uh, we reached the point that we're still explaining the statement and bringing some benefits from Sheikh uh, Ahmed al-Najmi rahmatullahi alayhi uh, with regards to the statement where Imam Babahari said, Know that Islam is a Sunnah and the Sunnah is Islam, and one of them cannot be established without the other. And whoever, uh, uh, whoever, woman, Ragaba, Ghayr al Jama'ah, wa Farakaha, Fakar Khala'a, Ribka to Islam, min Unukihi, wa Kana, Balin, Mudilla. Imam Babahari said, so from the Sunnah is adhering to the Jama'ah, the main body of the Muslims, and whoever desires other than the Jama'ah, then and it has divided them, and they have thrown off the yoke of Islam from their necks, and they are misguided, and they misguide others. So this is the case of those people who are du'at ala abu'ab jahannam, those people who are dies, those people who are callers to Islam and propagators to Islam, who are actually propagators to themselves. Maybe they're hisbis, maybe they propagate to themselves, they propagate to their, their clique. Oh, me and my brothers are the only ones guided, you better get down with us, or you're an innovator, or you're a disbeliever. That is hisbia. So people who are calling to themselves, they fit under this category. People who are calling to their particular minhaj, which is not in conformity, to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, like Akhwan al-Muslimin, like Jama'at al-Tabliq, and others, then they fit under this, that they are misguided and they misguide others because they're calling people to do things which are unorthodox, which are things which are not from, uh, or only partially from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but in a way that is which, which it does not conform to the Sunnah. For example, saying 40 days, that you need to travel for 40 days and do da'wah and make it, restricting it to 40 days or specifying that it has to be 40 days and then making Pakistan or India your destination over Hajj and all the various Sufi vicars that our brothers from Jamaat Tablik have fallen into and may Allah guide us in them and forgive us in them and bless them to come to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and give Dawah uh, based on Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu because they have a lot of zeal to do so so may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala guide them to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah So the person who falls into these types of bid'ah, they are misguided, and if they call others, then they're misguiding others. And related to this, Shaykh Ahmed al-Najmi, continue on what he said. He said, so whoever desires paradise, then he must adhere to the creed of Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah, taking their creed and methodology without deviating to the right and left. Or left, and this is the meaning of the statement of the author, meaning Imam Babahari. Islam is a Sunnah, and the Sunnah is Islam. So this is the meaning of that. Don't deviate to the right or the left. Adhere to the creed of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. That is the Islam. That is Islam Hakiki, as he said in the beginning, as we mentioned uh, about Islam Hakiki. He said we already mentioned that real Islam is the Sunnah, and the Sunnah is real Islam, and they are not independent. They are not uh, independent of one another. Then the author said, meaning Imam Baba Hari, and from the Sunnah sticking to the Jama'ah, and whoever desires other than the Jama'ah and divides it, then he has removed the yoke of Islam from his neck, and he is misguided and misguides. The author, may Allah have mercy upon him, meaning Imam Baba Hari, uh, points out that this refers to whoever believes in rebelling against the leader. So this is what uh, Sheikh Ahmed al-Najmi is making his, uh, his explanation here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon him. Ameen. And he said, what is meant by the jama'ah? So he's, now he's letting us know what, what does it mean, Ahl Sunnah with jama'ah? What did Imam Babahari mean when he was saying the jama'ah? And he said, what is meant by the jama'ah is the main body of Muslims. That is under a single Muslim ruler. Therefore, if he believes in rebelling against the Muslim ruler, then he is considered to have divided the Jama'ah, thrown off the yoke of Islam from his neck, and he is misguided and misguides. What is the evidence for this? He said, there is overwhelming evidence for this from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the consensus of the Muslims. So this is imperative to know, Ayyul Ahbab, that 
this is not as some of those deviated sects and a lot of these there's some deviant people out there uh, deviant groups and deviant callers, people who consider themselves people of knowledge, people who are considered by the West, these, uh, uh, some of them, they're Muslim, but they are, uh, they're basically Orientalists in their ideology, and they are secularists, and they are, uh, uh, you know, falling into these other ways of thought and ideologies which go against Islam. Some of them have the nerve to claim that a hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, that these hadith uh, about the leader are a Wahhabist plot, that they are a plot by followers of Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab or his methodology or something very strange like this. But these are hadith of Bukhari and Muslim which are way before Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab. And these hadith are by the consensus of the Muslim are a part of Islam and are authenticated. And these hadith are the form, the backbone and a soul of our, our religion of Islam. That Islam, we can't do without those ahadith and Bukhari and Muslim, because that's how we know uh, about the authenticity of uh, the explanation of the Quran. We know everything about Islam, our creed, our methodology, our manners, everything. It comes from those books, Bukhari and Muslim, and, uh, and from the Quran, first and foremost. Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasulullah Sallam. Where's the Sunnah coming from? Bukhari and Muslim and the other ahadith uh, that are authenticated on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is a, uh, a very strange thing that you have in this day and age that people who believe that if you, uh, if you do not criticize the ruler and you do not go against the ruler, uh, then you are uh, deviant. And in fact, that you should make it a part of your Tao and a part of your methodology and a part of your minhaj to criticize the rulers. This is such a very strange innovation. But this is an innovation that does Muslimid ilmen sabak. This is evidence or this is a, um, a methodology which refers back to people who preceded them. They do have people who preceded them. And they were known as the Khawarij. They were known as the Khawarij, the people who rebelled against Ali ibn Abi Talib anhu, and killed Uthman, some of their predecessors, and uh, radiallahu anhu, and they, you know, divided the Muslims, killed the Muslims, made their blood, their property lawful, and made takfir of Sahaba. So if you want to take that as your salaf, then for sure you're, as Imam Baba Hadi said, dal mudil, that you are misguided and you misguide others. But those people who believe in the athar of the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the salaf of this ummah, then they will adhere to the rope of Allah. Adhere to the rope of Allah and do not divide. The rope of Allah meaning the Qur'an and meaning the, the jama'at and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as some of the other mufassireen explain. So if you want to adhere to the jama'at and the methodology of Ahl sunnah then you'll know that the rulers have a special place. That we don't criticize them openly. We do not... Uh, even in, in even in quietly, if there's no benefit, you don't sit around with people and just criticize the rulers. That that is not from the methodology of the 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 uh, the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala majma'in and ahl sunnati wal jama'ah. That's not from their minhaj, their methodology, to criticize the rulers and rebel against the rulers and have like we have the Arab Spring that has taken place. None of that was in accordance with the Sunnah. No matter what the outcome, even if the outcome could have possibly had some benefits in some places where da'wah now is more open, da'wah to Ahl Sunnah, or what have you. That still does not mean that that was something Ahl Sunnah supports, or that was a good thing to rebel against a ruler. Because there are conditions, and we'll, we'll talk about those things, we'll get into that in the next lesson, because we don't want to make this lesson very long. Uh, so this is very important. To know that is from the overwhelming evidence from the Book of Allah, the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi and the consensus of the Muslims that uh, that the Muslims 
should not rebel against the Muslim leader. And we're going to get into detail about this issue in our next sitting. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ikhlas, with tabat ala sunnah, wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala nabiyyina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.